Welcome to Dale's Beekeeping Videos. I'm a master beekeeper and today's video is a continuation of the series I have on routine hive inspection. This series is geared toward the new beekeeper or the beekeeper that is um, interested in beekeeping yet but hasn't committed to it yet. It also could be for uh, intermediate uh, skilled beekeepers but it's mostly geared to the new beekeeper. Um, so what I do is I go through the in, in these videos I go through and show you what I'm doing as I'm actually doing it. Um, obviously it takes a little bit longer than, uh, as I'm doing it because I'm going to explain it to you. Um, but a um, new beekeeper typically takes about 30 to 45 minutes to uh, do a, a hive inspection because you're not used to what you're seeing. An experienced beekeeper can typically take about 5 to 10 minutes and a commercial beekeeper can do it in less than 5 minutes, usually about 2 to 3 minutes and tell you exactly what they saw in it. Um, if you're interested and you aren't familiar with what you're looking for, the diseases and pests, I have an hour long video. I think it's actually about 57 minutes. Um, so I, it, I'll put a link in the beginning. If not, if you look on Daryl's beekeeping videos, um, you'll see it in there on how to inspect a hive or colony. Um, and what I talk about in that video is I'm showing you exactly step by step what you're looking for, what you're smelling for, and how to do a thorough hive inspection. Again, I highly encourage you to look at it if you haven't been mentored on how to do a hive inspection. Um, so today's video uh, will probably take somewhere between an a beginner and an intermediate simply because I'm going to be explaining to you what I'm doing. Uh, so the hive I'm inspecting today is what I call hive three. I've got three rows of hives and this is the first hive in this third row. So I number them from one to three rows and then a uh, hive uh, in this case, if I had multiple B1 or 3A, 3B, 3C, etc., etc., down the line. In this case, I've only got one hive in this row, so it's hive three. Um, so this is a swarm that was given to me about a month ago. Um, so last time uh, I inspected it, I didn't uh, post a video on it. Um, this is uh, I had to add this second deep hive body because it was starting to become too congested in the brood chamber. Um, and they had a lot of syrup up here to help draw out the uh, comb on the foundation. So we're going to see what we uh, have inside today. Um, so prior to doing any inspection, I always do my prep work before I go inside the hive. So in this case, I like to have a hive tool. Uh, in, my, in my apiary, I actually have a hive tool on every uh, hive anyway. On one hive, I'll have a J hook uh, hive tool. And on the next hive over, I'll have a... Um, L-shaped hive tool, just my technique. You get them on Amazon, they're about three to five dollars a piece, they're dirt cheap. Um, so I have plenty of, of uh, hive tools in my apiary and it helps keep spreading any disease around. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, I like to have a full size hive body um, and telescoping top so that uh, I can move the bees over into this frame. Um, or, I rarely use a frame perch. Uh, a frame perch typically holds three to five frames on it, uh, but typically the only thing I'll use that for is if I want to take a still photo of something, um, either for to send it off to an estate apiary inspection or something I don't know what I'm looking at, which is rare. Um, but um, anyway, I use it to take still photos or in case taking still photos for my uh, YouTube channel and my Facebook page, um, Beekeepers United Group. Um, so, again, part of my preparation, I have a spare hive body. In this case, I have a uh, frame rest simply because I had it in this row. Um, I have a LED flashlight to help spot the eggs. I, because I'm an old guy, I also have one and a half power reading glasses that I will put on momentarily. Um, this helps me spot the eggs. Um, and then I like to have mineral oil and a spare... Um, Beetle Blaster Mineral Oil Trap. I like this trap. It's about $2 each. Um, and I like to have those in case I need, if I see small high beetles in there, um, I'll put these in if I don't already have one in there. And then if you've watched my other videos, I like to pre-mark all my frames with a line across one end um, so that it helps me keep the brood oriented. And I do that before uh, I put them in the hive because once they put wax on it or propolis on top of these it makes it hard for that line to stick um, so again I have another spare hive body in case I need it. in this case I've already got one but I've still got it just in case I see something I don't like and I can swap out a frame I have my smoker already lit and then I have in this case I'm going to anticipate 
uh, putting some more syrup in because they're drawing out the comb. Uh, although we do have a nectar flow going on, so they may not need it. We'll see what we have when we get into it. So now I'll go ahead and get um, suited up and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm all suited up, and a lot of beekeepers don't like to wear gloves, um, or the experienced beekeepers. I was burned many years ago, so I'm, my skin is very sensitive, so I always wear gloves, uh, unless I'm just pouring syrup in. So, again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the hive, I'm going to um, simply put a little bit of smoke in the front, just to kind of mask the alarm pheromones of the guard bees, and then, um, because I've got a Miller Hive top feeder, I'm actually going to pull this off off first. I'm going to take this hive top and flip it up. If you didn't have a hive top feeder on there, you would simply smoke it. And another trick uh, for a uh, trip to help you with ventilation issues is you take popsicle sticks or craft sticks uh, and then to break them in half and use a staple like a T50 stapler, put two on each end. Uh, two half sticks on each end. That'll help get rid of some of that excess moisture and it doesn't create enough space for the bees to crawl through there. I'm going to take a quick gander in here. I do see a little bit of syrup in here. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hive tool. I'm gonna, if I had a lot of syrup in here, I'd be very careful with this. Um, in this case, there's not a whole lot. So I'm going to simply smoke through that crack. And what that's going to do, it's going to drive the bees down. And it's also going to help mask the alarm pheromones. I'm going to give that about 20-30 seconds to spread throughout the hive and then if you notice when I put my hive top down I flipped it upside down so that allows me to take my component parts and lay them at angles to help keep smashing bees. Um, so I'm going to take this ventilated inner cover off um, and then take a quick gander inside the syrup chamber to see if I see anything weird or I'm also going to smell if I smell it kind of sour I know that that syrup would be bad in this case I always add honeybee healthy to it and that extends it and also gives them um, some essential oils. Um, advantage of the ventilated in covers, I can pour syrup through this. You'll see that at the very end of the video. Um, and it allows me to pour through it and uh, it keeps bees from flying out the front and coming up and getting inside the syrup chamber. They can uh, get to access to the syrup by coming up through the slot in the front of the miller feeder and then go down the ladder. That's also another screen. Uh, but if I didn't have this, skirt, this ventilated inner cover up, the bees could fly out front and then come in through here and land once I opened up the hive top. Um, so that's the purpose of the ventilated inner cover, plus it gives them ventilation as well. Um, so in this case, I've got it time to settle now. I'm going to simply remove this. If this were full, then I probably would not look underneath. In this case, it's almost empty. So I'm going to look underneath just to see what I see. Again, I most of the time, I don't, um, about 50-50 whether I actually look underneath or not. There's a slight chance that the queen could be in there, but it's rare that she is. Um, so I was mostly looking, because this time, last time I inspected this hive, they drew a lot of uh, comb underneath there. In this case, I've got uh, some dead bees on top, and I know what that's from last time. I accidentally uh, spilled syrup. Um, so I had a little bit of a mess on top of here. I'm going to take this... Uh, beetle trap off and I look in it to see if it, the fluid's moving smoothly. Uh, in this case it is. I'm looking for small high beetles. There's none. Uh, so I'm going to put that down. <coughs> Excuse me. Move this dead bee. I'm going to take a quick gander in here see if what I'm seeing. I don't see any bees or anything up top here so I'm not sure what's going on. In this case I can see that there's literally no bees in here. And I had some drawn comb um, in here so um, when I pull it out if you can see this I've got comb underneath that's what we call that is is uh, ladder comb and the reason for that is I've got an emery shim on this because this is this bottom box is a commercial made box um, and when they make the commercial made box it's got that bird's mouth same thing as the one on top um, unfortunately they don't make them deep enough in my opinion they don't cut these uh, frame rest uh, or the rabbit as it's called deep enough and you can see that the frames are almost uh, even with the top of the things when I make my own equipment uh, my high body, I actually make three-quarter inch rabbits, uh, three-quarter inch deep, 
and that allows me to not have to use an emery shim if I use a pollen patty. I have a pollen patty in there. So as because it's a commercial box, they've made ladder comb underneath that. You can even remove it if you wanted to, but most of the time I don't um, unless it's in my way. If it starts getting in the way, then I'll move it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this because I know that there's no bees in here. I'm going to put it off to the side in this case because I want to use this box, to, this full box to uh, put um, the frames in. I pull off this emery shim. Again, if you're feeding the pollen patty, um, you want to use an emery shim. You have to because otherwise um, you can't get the above component parts down on it. And then I look on here, I see in looking at the pollen patty, I'm going to go ahead and remove this temporarily. Uh, and and as, I'm, as I'm taking this off, I'm actually looking for small high beetles as well because small high beetles also love pollen patties. So I don't see any on there. Um, and then next thing I'm going to do, you can see some of this ladder comb in this. Uh, again, I think this is because uh, I had that emery shim on there. Um, I'm going to pull this out. In this case, I, I'm going to dump it out because I accidentally got syrup in it last time. Um, what I'd done is I accidentally, uh, I forgot to take it and move it away from the hive as I was scraping that um, comb underneath the Miller's hive top feeder and I accidentally poured some down in there. Uh, you run the risk of killing brood when you're in there, so we're going to see what's in there. It looks like they're pretty strong, so it must not have done much to them, but you run the risk of drowning brood when you do that. So if you have, don't make that mistake, um, if you have that, um, simply move the hive top feeder away. Ideally, you scrape it off before you put syrup in there. In this case, I had it, um, it was still probably about half full, so I, I must have tipped it too far forward. So that's all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill this full back full of... Um, about halfway full of mineral oil and again that's why you want to do all your prep work before you get out here and before you open it, everything up I'm going to set that aside and next thing I'm going to do I like to look down in here and just see what's in here um, in this case I'm going to go ahead and move this ladder comb it's almost always drone comb anyway so it's not a big deal I'm going to set it aside here um, you always want to check for the queen but she's more than likely not going to be up on top um, I'm just going to move this other one while I'm at it. Once the girls get out of, away from this comb, I'll actually take that and throw it in a bucket, and you can use that later at a later date uh, for making uh, foundation or use it in candle making. So now all I'm doing is I'm seeing where the brood is. I'm seeing them spread throughout that. So the last time this thing was packed full. Um, so I'm going to take my hive tool. I'm going to take it down on the bees and just lightly move it back and forth, and they'll know to get out of the way. So I'm going to separate those frames a little bit. Now I'm going to take my J-hook, in this case, uh, as I don't have a whole lot of space, I'm going to flip it underneath. I'm going to grab this frame, and then I'm going to grab it over here. And I'm going to lift it straight up and lift the, the frame backwards so I can get a better hold on it. And this outside frame, so the chances of the queen being on here are very slim. I'm going to flick that dead bee off the corner there. I'm seeing uh, bee bread. Bee bread is nothing more than one well, of the girls just stung my glove. <laughs> I'm going to quickly... Uh, Try to get that off, excuse me for a second. Um, when you do that, if you get stung, you immediately want to take a straight edge and then scrape it off, but never dig into it. And then I'm gonna smoke this glove because what she's done is she's released the alarm pheromone. And by removing that, you don't want to squeeze that venom um, sac that's still attached to that stinger because uh, you're releasing more poison into your hand. So I smoked it to mask the alarm pheromones that she just released on me. And now I'll go back to work. Um, again, I'm looking in 360 around the outside edges first and then goes concentric circles in. Um, I'm seeing bee bread and the reason I'm doing that is I'm looking for the queen. Um, again, she's likely not on, on this outside frame because it's almost always honey, but occasionally she will be so you still have to look for it. In this case, I'm seeing uh, drawn comb, or not drawn comb, but uh, honey, um, uncapped honey and capped honey, so it's perfectly fine. Next one in, again, I'll just lightly Again, just wiggle it up, and your bees move out of your way. Excuse me, girls. Pull it straight up so you don't accidentally roll the queen. Um, I put, I hold the frame above my, uh, where the sun's above my shoulder, and I'm looking at it, I immediately see eggs. Uh, so once I see eggs, I'm not too worried about finding the queen. Uh, if I find her, great. Um, but if not, what they can do, as soon as that egg falls over and closes, he, he closes into a larvae, um, they can make an emergency queen should they need to. So 
If I see the queen, great. If I see the queen, I'm immediately put the frame over top of the box or isolate her in another box um, until um, this is chock full of eggs. So this queen is doing really, really well. Almost all these cells are full. There she is. So I've got her. So um, you probably can't see her. Um, I'll try. She's moving around right here. So because I've got her, I'm going to do what I call isolating her. Um, I'm going to simply put her in the box. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, smoke got in me. And I'm putting her in a spare box that has a bottom underneath it. In this case, this is the uh, hive top. And away from all other frames, because what that allows it does, the chances of her moving off that frame now are very slim. Um, so it makes it easy if whenever I get ready to put uh, my frames back in, and I like to check that queen frame one final time, one final time, to see if she's on there. So by isolating it from nothing else near it, um, there's a good chance that I'll I'll see her on that frame. Uh, so now I've seen her, I could actually speed this process up because I don't have to worry about killing the queen now. If I kill a few brood uh, worker bees, it sucks to be them, but it's, it's part of life. Uh, so this is a really good frame. Um, so I've got honey in the corners. Um, a lot of times they will have the yeah, others pollen, so the in concentric uh, circles type thing. I've got they've got good honey on the top here, um, and then they've got pollen immediately surrounding that, so they can grab the pollen first, and then that's because it's closest to the brood. In this case, it's mostly cat brood. I've got a really solid brood pattern, and the holes that I do see here are be, are larvae in there, um, and I see a couple eggs. Um, so she's going back in and filled all those homes, uh, all those holes. So again, this is a really, really good brood pattern. Um, I think um, she's doing really well. So again, I'm gonna put this in this, but I'm gonna put it away from that queen uh, so that she doesn't move it. So all the other frames, because I want to keep this frame isolated now, I'll just simply shift them over and I'll know to shift them back when I'm done. Um, so again, I go in here, move it. Again, I can move a little faster now. Again, solid brood. I'm seeing larvae in these open cells. So again, this queen is doing really, really well. Uh, I'm seeing drone cells. Drone cells are bullet shaped. They stick up away, uh, above all the other worker cells. Again, this is a really, really good frame. Um, and what I'm looking at is, um, I'm reason I'm feeding this uh, colony pollen patties. I've got dry pollen in a feeder, community feeder in my apiary, but I'm giving her a pollen patty as I actually want to get them to be congested a little bit um, and uh, have that other, so that either they a, either a make queen cells and I can make a queen cell split for you on the video or uh, what I'm hoping is they just draw out enough bees and I can um, do a do little split for you um, in one of the videos. So you see on my videos I put a line across one end of all the frames and what that allows me to do is to keep the brood oriented so that I don't confuse the bees any more than I need to. I can put them back in the order that I found them. I just gotta remember, because I've got this isolated queen situation now, I just gotta remember to flat everything over and put them back in order. So again, you can see, I'm a, and I've got a queen cup here. If you notice uh, what I'm doing, and I do it one-handed, this is a good way if I ever had that light, I just simply show it, shine it down. Um, I'll show you that trick real quick. So if I had to and I didn't have good lighting, I could simply take my frame, rest it on the frame in, on top of the hive, and then take my LED light and then shine it down in the cells and you can see, and again if you use the one and a half power reading glasses that helps you see it a lot better. Um, I've got a queen cup and then I'm going to look in it. So queen cup is nothing more than an acorn looking cell and again I'll try to remember to have a still video for you. And I like to look inside. and. Uh, there's, if they make queen cups, that's perfectly natural. They do that a lot. Um, I normally don't break them. I normally don't tear them out um, unless I'm getting a lot of uh, swarm cells. Um, again, it's a queen cup. Just terminology. It's an acorn shape. As long as it's empty, it's called a queen cup. When they put a larvae, an egg, or royal jelly in there, they are making a queen cell, either a supersedure cell or a swarm cell. Generally, swarm cells are on the sides and the bottom and then um, the lower third of the uh, frame and there'll be a lot of them. Uh, whereas if it's a supersedure cell, usually it's up on the top two thirds of the frame and then it's on the face of the frame. Um, in this case, uh, the, that uh, 
queen cup is fine. So again, I'll pull this up and hopefully show you what a nice brood pattern looks like. If I can see that I've got sunlight going in my eyes, so it's kind of hard to see what a what I'm looking at. So I hope you can see it. If not, I'll edit it out. Um, but again, you can see the queen cup. Again, I'm not worried about the queen because she's protected now. This is the this is the queen cup. I've got a drone cells that are here that are bullet shaped. And I'm gonna put this back. And hopefully I put this back in the right spot. This is a black plastic frame that somebody gave me, so it's kind of hard to mark it with my marking. Hive tool. Hive tool. All right, this is uh, pollen and uh, uncapped honey. And as I'm smelling, I'm smelling for foul smells that would indicate European foul brood. And I'm also looking for um, perforated uh, cappings that would indicate American foul brood. All right, so again, uh, another frame of uh, foundation. They're drawing out the comb properly. I'm looking to see if improperly drawn foundation is one in which they are dr uh, drawing out tunnels. So this is actually a really good frame. Um, I may consider doing a um, do a little split with it because it is chock full of brood. Now, this is nothing more than um, uncapped honey. And unfortunately, I've got a pin B in here somehow. She must have got killed. Or, oh, that's what she did. She fell whenever I uh, poured syrup through there. So, anyway, this is, there's another one. It must have fallen from the top. Again, if they, any of the cells I damage like this, they're going to repair, so it's not a big deal. All right, so these bees are doing extremely well. Um, I'm going to think about it a little bit, whether I actually want to do a do little split today with them or not. Uh, obviously, it would be a separate video. Um, I've got one frame at sun. The, and again, the reason you would know to add another brood box like I did is when they've, you only have two frames left inside the box that have not been drawn out yet, that's the time to go ahead and add the second box to it. Um, so I've got one that's not yet. That's why I've still got that one uh, here. They haven't started drawing out comb on there yet. Um, let's see. Let me count my brood frames. See if I want to do a split today. This is no brood, that's, that's honey. You want about at least three to four frames of brood uh, before you make a split. This is one pack full of brood. So that's one, two, Three frames of solid brood so far. And then I have the queen. Now that I've got her, um, I've got three frames of brood and then this one's chock full of eggs. So, and now that I know, remember I, the queen was on this frame, so I'm gonna keep her over the box as I'm talking. Hopefully she's still there. Actually, I'm gonna put her over here just in case she falls, she'll fall into her actual box. Um, I'm probably not gonna do a split because uh, they've only got three and a half frames of brood. Um, I'm on a business trip and then when I do, um, I'll probably go ahead and make the split then. So again, I'm just checking to see if she's in here. I'm looking on the margins, see if she's in there. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Where are you? This girl likes to hide pretty well. <laughs> I'm gonna put everything back together. I'm gonna put my beetle trap back in here. And when I put my beetle traps in, if I put one on one side, I like to put the next one on the other side. I'm gonna move my frames over to one side. I am going to put that pollen patty wherever I have it. Let me knock the rest mm -hmm. of these bees in here. I'm going to put this pollen patty in there again so that she has access to it. I'm going to put my emery shim on here because it's a commercial 
hide body and the frames are shallow, I'm going to go ahead and put this other box on top. Square everything up. I'm going to put this other beetle trap in here. Again, because that one's on that side, this one will be on this side. I'm going to put my Miller high top feeder on there, put it on there, up, down, up, down, up, down, so I don't smash bees, so that's all the bees. Um, knock bees off. Put my screen on, and then I am going to stir my syrup one final time. I'm going to fill my feeder. So it takes about six to eight pounds of honey to make one pound of beeswax because I'm, they're drawing out comb, I'm going to fill them. When I fill this, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to watch the levels, make sure it doesn't go up and over the lip uh, like it did last time. Um, so again, so I don't kill bees. And that is kind of it. Um, again, I'm just going to knock these bees off, put my hive top on and because I have seen the queen and eggs in this case um, I'm going to put my full size red brick on there which means I've seen queens or eggs if I saw corn swarm cells or uh, queen cells of any type I would put a half red brick on there that lets me know to keep close attention to this hive um, that's all there is to this uh, so thank you for watching the video and have a great day